there's relief from every care In a little while we're going home And no tears shall fall in that city bright and fair In a little while we're going home In a little while, in a little while We shall cross the billows foam We shall meet Good morning. Welcome again to our service today. We're glad that you're here. I know some of our folks are traveling, but uh, we are we are glad that you're here today. We're here to meet with the Lord and, and get get the blessing that He has for us. And and I I'm sure. Even though we're small in number, the Holy Spirit is here with us. That's what I take comfort in. And uh, we have a few announcements. You can look in the bulletin. But one thing I want to remind you, this is the first Sabbath of the month, so we have a potluck today. And so I hope we all can be there afterwards. And then, of course, we have these other usual ones tomorrow morning. Uh, we have our prayer time, but also a reminder, and it's a good reminder for some of us older folks, you need to get, forget that daylight saving time is over. We're back to regular time as of tomorrow morning, so that means we'll have to set our clocks back one hour later. I think that's what it says, right? One hour later? We go back. So like tomorrow, instead of being 10.53, it'll be 9.52, right? Yes. Okay. So that, I'm right. Okay, remember that. And then uh, these other, other announcements for the week are prayer meeting Wednesday and then prayer time next Friday. And then uh, I guess there's some... Here's some uh, <coughs> list corrections that need to be made, look like. For who, who is this one? Post office box number for Eileen, Ellen, should be 1095, and your cell number should be so and so forth. So those of you who need to know that, it's there. And then, uh, I guess uh, this is sort of a first notice, the church Board took, had a, we had a church board meeting last Sunday, and the action we took was that uh, we voted to retain the, the current church officers for 2020. So if you do not hold a position but would like to, or if you'd like to resign from your current position, or would like to have a different position, please contact Warren Downs and we'll work with uh, you on that, and uh, and if there's any changes, we'll bring them up up to the church uh, for the church to approve. And then uh, <clears throat> notice we have some future events. Thanksgiving program. This must be the school, right? Thanksgiving program, November 21, and then. School Christmas concert, December 12. So if you want to have a part in that, be ready. So, so thank you for these announcements. And let's just bow our heads for a word of prayer. Ask God to be with us. Father, we thank you for a chance to come to your house to worship you today. And as we humbly come before you, we ask for your presence and guidance throughout the remainder of our service. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Our opening hymn is number 214. Please stand. We have this 
this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. We have this faith that Christ alone imparts. Faith in the promise of His Word. We believe the time is here when the nations far and near shall awake and shout and sing hallelujah christ is king we have this hope that burns within our hearts hope in the coming of the in Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. We are united in His love. Love for the waiting people of the world. People who need our Savior's love. Soon the heavens will open wide Christ will come to claim his bride. All the universe will sing. Hallelujah, Christ is King. We have this hope, this faith in God's great love. We are united in Christ. It's time now for praise and prayer time. Um, <laughs> rock on, Shirley. <laughs> um, we like to extend prayers for the Wilson family. Kenny passed away last night, so. Um, anybody else have any prayer, praises or prayers? Go ahead. Unspoken? Yeah? Okay. Oh, right. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Any other praises or prayers? Oh, wow. Okay.
Teresa? Teresa, you had a... Any others? So let's kneel as far as possible. Father in heaven, we come to you on bended knee. We ask that you forgive us of our sins. And hear our prayers. There's a lot of prayer requests today for healing in Togiak of the family, for healing with Kenny Wilson's family. Be with them. And for others who are suffering with cancer, if it be your will, heal them. If not, save them for the resurrection and heal them then. We thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness, for being with us all the time, for showing us mercy, even when we don't show mercy ourselves. You heard many requests, and there's some unspoken requests. You know what we need, and you know our hearts. Humble us that we may be followers of you. Be with Joe as he gives us words of uh, words from your uh, Bible that we may understand and give discernment to all of us for our the words that he will speak to us. Thank we you, pray in Jesus' name, amen. Now it's time for Offering it's for a local church budget. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this church that we may worship you in out of the weather and cold. Bless the funds that we that come forth from this offering. They may keep your house going forward as a light on the hill. We pray in Christ's name, amen.
three, four weeks. When they got there, they went the house. Oh, enough, big enough for them to live in, and some extra room they had, and they want to use it.
they open the door and people start coming into the house. And the first one was the father with the boy. And they bring something and put it on the table. And he said, my boy is okay now, doesn't hurt anymore, and he's okay, and thank you. And he left, and another person came in, put something on the table, and another person came in and put something else. The whole town came there and brought something for them. What was what they needed? Food. What do you think the people brought there? Food. What kind of food do you think? Bread, what else? Eggs, what else? Tomatoes, all kind of food they bring now. Cash browns, okay, cash browns too. Okay. Okay, good. <coughs> then that is pizza. Pizza, okay, maybe they bring pizza also. But the point is, God sent moment they need. What the boy needed first? Somebody fix it his eye, right? God gave that? God sent the doctor to fix it his eye? There. The boy was there. Who fixed it his eye? The doctor did? Yes. The doctor did. Then God was the one. And they take the time at that time. They, they let them know that how much I love them all, and that they are there just to help them, to teach them how to eat properly, they, to teach them how to be healthy, and how to be good to each other. And that is our God, who provides everything that we need, or they need, then that is what they provide. Well, next week, I don't know who will be teaching the the story, but I don't think that will be you next week. Okay, you may go and thank you very much. Thank you. Well, welcome you all again this morning for this special service that uh, we partake of every so often. And it's uh, according to the gospel, the promise is that in as much as we do this together, we do show the Lord death till he comes. It reminds us of the great sacrifice that God has made for us. So we'll be going through the service. And uh, <clears throat> for our visitors, I want to welcome you to partake of and be part of our communion service today. And what we, uh, our order of service usually is, I'll, I'll say a few words and then, uh, when, we get to, when I get done with that, we'll break for a time of uh, fellowship with one another, serving one another, washing one another's feet, and then we'll come back with the elders uh, and uh, the deacons who will help to serve uh, our bread and wine that uh, we partake of. So let's just ask the Lord to bless us as we have his service. Father in heaven, Thank you for your love and care and what you did for us back in Calvary 2,000 plus years ago. And also for the promise that you made that uh, 
that as we continue to serve you until you come, that you will have a part with us in your kingdom. And so as we are gathered together, we invite your presence to be with us as we take a moment to review some of your promises pertaining to your second coming. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> It was uh, shortly after, probably maybe even moments after, that very first supper, or last supper, I guess the Lord performed with his disciples that uh, he gave us this wonderful promise in John 14, 1 and 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. It's uh, a wonderful promise that, uh, that Jesus made to his disciples right after they got done with the, the first, he, him instituting what we refer to today as the Lord's Supper. And I really appreciate that promise that Jesus said he was going to come again. You know, uh, in the context of... Uh, this, he had been talking about his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And it all came true just like he mentioned it would. And it was after his resurrection that, uh, that Jesus, after spending time with his disciples again, was taken up into heaven. Acts uh, just simply records uh, a few words concerning that, and it's a promise that as an affirmation to the disciples back then, and I really think it's an affirmation to us today. Acts chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. Jesus uh, had told them in verse 7, it is not for you to know the time, times or seasons which the Father had put in his own power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. After he had given his, his uh, command to his disciples to proclaim the message of salvation to all these places, plus the world, including the world in which we live today. The Bible says that when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Must have been a real, real experience for disciples to see their, their savior, their master, departing just like he said he would. And then uh, maybe, maybe they even uh, might not have remembered some of the stuff that he told them because the Holy Spirit had not, had not fallen upon them yet as a, as a church. But it says, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, and as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. This is very similar to the two angels that uh, were there when, when the disciples found Jesus being gone from the grave. God wanted to, uh, to encourage them by sending his angels to reaffirm the promise that Christ has made. So in verse 11 it says, which also said, you men of Galilee, 
Why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you in, unto heaven, shall so come in like manner, as you have seen him go into heaven. So these words were the last words that were spoken to the disciples as they were gathered together. The Bible mentions there must have been maybe about four or five hundred people that uh, witnessed this uh, ascension of Christ to heaven. But with these words, he assured them that he was coming again. And you know, <clears throat> that was where the beginning of the gospel um, was from the mouths of uh, the disciples who heard these words. And, uh, and as a result, uh, uh, somehow the Lord worked to where Apostle be Paul became one of them. And uh, I just love the words that uh, I share often when we, whenever we have a, a funeral service. And I just heard, uh, for those of you who may not have been here earlier, that uh, our friend Kenny Wilson passed away. Yesterday, we've been praying for him. Eric and I visited him uh, a week or so ago when we were in Anchorage. And uh, we prayed for him last night as well, not knowing that he passed away. But uh, as I was thinking about this this morning after I heard just reminded of uh, these words which I often share with, with us when we get together or our, our goodbyes at, uh, at, at funeral services. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. And the title is, The Dead in Christ Shall Rise First. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. We have this hope. We had that for opening song this morning. We have this hope. We have this hope of Jesus coming back. For if we believe that Jesus is died and rose again, even though them which also which sleep in Jesus will God will bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. What a wonderful promise. We, uh, <clears throat> our family just lost uh, our younger brother a couple of months ago, and, and uh, I, we're, we're looking for, um, I know all of us as brothers and sisters in Christ have also lost many loved ones. But this is the, the promise that in verse 17 that uh, will get us all together. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You know, oftentimes we, we reserve these scriptures for, for funeral services, but they are meant for us to, to think about as we celebrate the fact that uh, we've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, who instituted uh, for us uh, a service which we all will have a part in. And today, instead of uh, preaching to you about that, I thought I would <clears throat> I'll give us a chance to, to do it together. So I, wa I want to invite you to uh, open your hymnals to a uh, responsive reading section in the back, and we will go, go through several promises contained in that, uh, in that section of our hymnal.
together. Let's go to, we're going to read three of them, and they're one right after another. The first one is uh, 771. And it talks about the living bread, which we will have a, a, a part in having a symbol of as we will partake bread today. And then uh, we'll go right into the next one. So I will read the, uh, the light version, and you can help me read the, uh, the, the darker print. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whosoever comes to me shall never be hungry, and whosoever believes in me shall never be thirsty. But you, as I said, do not believe, although you have seen. All that the Father gives me, and the man. For it is my Father's will that everyone who looks upon a son and puts his faith in him shall possess eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. I am that living bread, which has come down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he shall live forever. Moreover, the bread which I will give is my own flesh. I give it for the life of the world. Jesus replied, in truth, in very truth, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you can have no life in you. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood possesses eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. My flesh is real food, my blood is real drink. And then let's go ahead and turn it to the next one, 722. And this describes uh, <coughs> 772, the next one, 772. And we will also go right into verse 773 after this one. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. He came to Simon Peter, who, used, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. 
No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Then, Lord, Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that, that is what I am. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. And 773, this is from Paul's writing, I receive from the Lord that which I also deliver to you. Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you and do this in remembrance of me. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Thank you for helping me with the service this morning. You know our... <clears throat> Our uh, scripture reading pretty much sums up what, uh, what the prophets and what we as church members are continuing to look for. And the, uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, God has been working with us as his people to get us ready for that. And, uh, and the way that, uh, that we have accepted our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is the first step that has allowed us to, to travel with him thus far to this very experience which we are having today. And it is as we continue as brothers and sisters in Christ uh, regardless, uh, yeah, and I want to say this, regardless of what church we belong to, because we have accepted the Lord as our Savior, and remember to get together from time to time to, to show our appreciation for what he has done for us, and to also to show that we are willing to wait patiently for the time when he shall come to take us home. And our scripture mentioned today, there's coming a time when that will happen. And this is a, a wonderful promise that uh, Isaiah wrote concerning that. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The only thing that the Lord requires of me and you is that we make him the Lord of our life. 
and uh, continue to serve him as his child. This is what our service is all about today. So let's thank the Lord and, and we will dismiss, uh, we'll be dismissed to go to take up the second portion of it. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the opportunity that uh, you've given us and instructed us as your children to, to do as often as we can to remind us of that you died for us, but through your death you provided salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. And now as we separate to, to serve one another as a practice you also instituted, we ask that you'll bless us and if there's any indifference between us, Lord, any sin that might separate us from you, we ask for forgiveness. So bless us throughout the remainder of the service and just dismiss us now for this portion. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We can uh, go and, and be separated for a while and then we'll come back in and and finish off with the rest of the service. Thank you.
Let's sing together until we're all ready to continue. Hymn number 309. To Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him, in His presence daily live. I surrender all, I surrender all. all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Oh, to Jesus I surrender, humbly at His feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me, Jesus, take me now.
say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And we're all looking for that, that time. So may the Lord bless and keep us that we may be faithful to him until that time. And the Bible says that when they had sung an hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Our closing hymn is number 633. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the merchant's bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim's pathway clouds will overspread the sky but when traveling days are over not a shadow not a sign when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trust in serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toes of life repair when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory onward to the prize before us soon his beauty will behold soon the pearly gates will we shall tread the streets of gold when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we'll sing and shout the victory